To use the Net Circuit Labs scope to measure AC voltages, I'm going to need an AC source. So I'll come up to one of our modules, click on Select. From the drop down list, I'm going to select the function generator. Now I'll tell you more about the function generator in another video, but just so we've got uh, some values to work with. I'll click on a few of these controls here and that will have produced a sine wave on this output of a reasonable size that's very measurable on the scope. Um, you'll notice that the function generator's output terminal is two-colored. Importantly this means that only the blue channel, that's channel B, and only the violet channel, that's channel D, can be connected to this output. Channel A and channel C can't be used to measure either of the two outputs of the function generator. Now, I just want to measure one output, so I think I'll turn off channel A, channel C, and channel D. Now I just have a readout for channel B, and I'll use channel B to look at the output of the function generator. Now we have um, an, um, an output there displayed on the scope, uh, but the scope isn't adjusted optimally for viewing that signal. So let's make some adjustments. It's possibly time to introduce you to the elasticity control. As you can see, this connection cuts across our display here. And so if I make an adjustment, a small adjustment there, we can see that a little bit better now. And I'm going to adjust that to, uh, that is the sensitivity to one volt per division to make the signal a bit bigger on the screen. I need to adjust the time base as well. Let's come to about 20 microseconds. Let's make it 50 microseconds. We have two or so cycles on the scope's display. And um, we don't, of course, need to make an adjustment to the input coupling control for this particular signal. But if we wanted to remove any DC component from it, we'd make sure that we switch the input coupling to AC. And if I was to move the vertical position control, you can see that the trace moves around. And that's because the triggering at the moment it is presently set to the channel A input. So of course we need to set that to channel B. And now we have control over the um, the start position of the signal on the, the trace. So we can move that up and down, so the trigger level control in other words. And for our convenience also, we can move the trigger point across the screen to some perhaps other convenient point for us to use. That's up to you. Let's adjust this elasticity a bit more. And we can see that this voltage is apparently 1.7 volts. Now, this is an RMS figure, so of course if we wanted to have the peak value for that, we could multiply that by the square root of 2, and if we wanted the peak-to-peak -peak value for that, then we'd multiply that figure by 2 again. Um, we have a readout here of the frequency, so apparently it's 5.18 kilohertz, and there you have it measuring AC voltage using the scope on NetCircuit Labs.